Hey, what's up? Um, my name is Tim. I'm with the band Rise Against, and uh, we're here to show you guys uh, some of the guitars that we play on tour. We also use them in the studio. So, um, yeah, let's check it out. I'll show you the guitar that I've been playing. Uh, I started playing, when I started playing guitar, I started uh, with an SG. I had like an 84 uh, SG. I beat the shit out of it, um, played it for many years. Um, and then I always had that, that same kind of problem that a lot of guitar players have, which is SGs don't stay in tune very well. And so I kind of um, started using the Les Paul a lot more often um, until we discovered uh, this company, the Evertune, um, who install these bridges in guitars that keep the guitars in tune. I know this has polarized the guitar world and it's controversial and et cetera, et cetera. But I just like that I'm finally fucking in tune and I can play an SG again. Um, so it has this bridge here. It has, and the SG is slim, so it's a pretty unwieldy sort of um, apparatus in the back, but I kind of don't give a shit because the guitar sounds great. This is the, so this is the custom reissue, and then it has the Everton bridge in it. This is what I've been playing uh, mostly. It really holds up with my Les Pauls, which is nice. Uh, it's a lot lighter too, which is nice when you're playing for 90 minutes a night. Um, and I just, I've always loved SGs, and I just, I kind of, drifted away from them because I just, I couldn't keep them in tune, so. All right, I'll show you this one. Uh, this one's uh, just a Gibson Les Paul custom, but I bought it at the, at the shop in Louisville called Wildwood Guitars. They're one of, they're one of like Gibson's exclusive retailers. So Gibson kind of lets them uh, pick the woods, go in there and fuck with a little bit. And they give them these kind of signature Les Pauls that you can only get from them. So this is tiny little town in Colorado. This little shop, uh, we walked into it once years ago with the guys from Bad Religion and thought we were in the wrong place because we'd heard it was legendary and it was just sort of this just tiny little shop selling a lot of entry level stuff. But it turns out they have this warehouse full of 5,000 instruments, including um, these Wildwood Les Pauls. They do also do Wildwood, they have, a, they have uh, Fenders and they have a couple relationships with uh, a few different companies. Anyway, it's kind of just a, a pretty unique instrument. We also ever tuned it because I love it so much and I, I just wanted it to, uh, to be in tune. I also, uh, we ended up using, no, we didn't end up using this one in the studio, I don't think, because this was post, yeah. So this one, I've been playing this one a lot lately, uh, or the last, like, last tour until I got the SG. So that's, that's the X. That's, that's the Evertune bridge when it sits in a, a, a thicker guitar, it looks a little more normal, so. All right, and then, um, this is just the classic custom, so I've had this for a few years. It's also a great sounding guitar, um, and also had it ever tuned, so. And then I'll just show you my acoustic. Uh, I've been on the search for the perfect acoustic, um, and I played a show with Jackson Brown. It was like actually like a union rally in Wisconsin. Um, and he pulled out this guitar and it sounded amazing. <clears throat> and I asked him later, you know, what, what guitar is that that you're playing? Cause it sounds incredible. And he said, well, it's my guitar. And I was like, well, I know it's your guitar. And he's like, no, it's my signature guitar. And I was like, oh, you, of course you're Jackson Brown. You have a signature guitar. And so I went out and got one, promptly cracked the headstock off on tour. Um, so it's been repaired, uh, good as new. It's just a much wider, fatter bodied acoustic. It, um, you can find out about all, find out about these things all, all over online, but um, it's just like, it's a big, boomy, incredible sounding guitar. It just like, it, when I play it, it's just, it has a lot more, I don't know, depth to it, you know? Um, and it's been my favorite one to play uh, recently. And that's about it. You know, I'm not really uh, a guitar person. I see them as tools, you know what I mean? Like, they're kind of like, it doesn't matter what you have in this rack, it kind of matters what you do with it. You know, like if you're on the search for the perfect instrument, like stop being on that search and start writing songs and playing shows and, and practicing and playing because the guitar doesn't really, doesn't really matter. You know, what matters is like what you're doing with it. And so um, the guitars are just, they're just tools, you know? And so that's kind of how I, how I see them all. So. Hey, I'm Zach from Rise Against and I'm going to be showing you my stuff. So, um, my main guitar here lately has been just a Gibson Classic Custom. I like the Classic line because, well, A, they're not chambered, 
which Gibson has started doing that trend where things are chambered, which is fine. Um, and usually for jumping around on stage like we do, it's awesome because you still, you're playing a Les Paul, but it's not killing you and giving you, you know, arthritis. Um, but uh, I like the classic custom line because they build them on the old specs, which means they're not chambered. Also, um, we have been using these Evertune bridges and putting an Evertune bridge on your guitar is like putting a tremolo on it. So it, it's major surgery. It cuts a huge chunk out of it. So these classic customs uh, just happen to also be less expensive. Uh, we have a good deal with Gibson. They're really nice to us, but uh, I kind of wanted to give it, troubleshoot it and give it a shot. So I went ahead and, and bought uh, these. And, you know, when I was a kid and I would go to Guitar Center, I bought a classic custom. That was the Les Paul I could afford. You know, and it looked like a standard. It, you know, it was nothing different. It wasn't like a studio, a Les Paul studio, where it wasn't binded and had dots on the end. Like, and so uh, they had the standard classic custom, which looked like a Les Paul. Um, and that's me. I was a, a big aesthetics kid, and so I wanted that. And this looks like a custom, you know. But the only difference is it's not double binded, so you kind of have to look real close. And so far, it's been awesome. I put Seymour Duncan um, distortions in it. And I put black hardware on it because I'm a nerd and I wanted it to look more metal. What's up, man? And um, yeah, and so we've been using these and we did them in the studio in the first place. Man, it was so perfect. We tuned once a week or something. Now, as Tim said, I know the guitar community is polarized by these bridges, but man, I mean, I'm not ever tuning a 59 Sunburst, you know what I mean? Uh, and it's for what we're doing, it makes live tuning just completely perfect. I can't argue with it. We have friends giving us shit about it already, but whatever. Uh, so this, the backup, also a classic custom. I have recorded 80% of our new record with this particular guitar. Again, black hardware, because I'm a nerd. Uh, Seymour Duncan distortion pickups. Um, I actually like this one a little bit more than the black one. Uh, it plays a bit better, but again, not chambered, real Les Paul, and it's rad. Um, I have a third guitar out here that's not ever tuned, and this is one that I just wanted to look like Ace Frehley's. So Ace Frehley had the three humbuckers, you know, he had the, the white, contrasting white plastic, and he had the three humbuckers, and then the gold speed knobs, you know. So mine doesn't have three humbuckers, but I wanted the real stark white, you know, again, aesthetics, you know. But this was the guitar I used for 95% of our of in-game tour, you know, every day. And it's still rad, and it's still out here. Maybe I should send it home. Um, I also have an acoustic out here, although I'm not using it much. Um, Tim's the acoustic guy, and this is just the Gibson uh, J160, I believe. Uh, I used to call it, you know, the Beatles guitar, because this is what George Harrison and and uh, John Lennon were using on uh, Ed Sullivan Show with the two knobs, you know. And so I like that a whole lot. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the guitars for me. Um, again, I just wanted to use some stuff that I didn't really mind if they got messed up. You know, we already kind of messed them up with the Evertunes and it's always, you know. So I wanted to use a guitar that, you know, I could put stickers on and scratch up and not really care. I've had Les Pauls like that one particularly, where I'm just like, oh God, I got a scratch on it. Um, <laughs> you guys want to go through the amps? Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, we kind of wanted to step into the future just a bit, or at least into the present, which we hadn't done. We were just pretty much plugging Gibson straight into Marshalls, which, you know, hasn't ever failed ACDC. Um, but we had a guy, uh, a guy we all know and love, uh, a guy named Rim Massengill, and uh, he had some ideas about some things where we basically still could use just uh, pedals and Marshall heads and Gibson guitars, but there was a new way we could do that that would uh, tidy some things up. So what we're using are these RGM Mastermind pedals, uh, pedal board switching systems. Um, they're really cool because basically, like I said, it's just a really cool way of going from your guitar to your pedal to your amp. But this way, you know, there's a thing where you can preset it to where you're doing two pedals or you're doing three pedals or you're changing the, you know, so you're not having to step on them in, you know. And we have a guy over here, our guitar tech, Jeff Bilson, who we all know and love dearly and he handles all this so it makes his life much much easier um this is tim's pedals right here so he's using uh well shit. he's got the the boss noise gate the boss delay an ibn s tap tremolo and an mxr carbon copy delay um these are my pedals over here if you can see them i'm using an ibn s 2 screamer and an mxr gt od 
and the analog chorus and also the MXR carbon copy delay. I was using some boss pedals and the MXR people were good enough to bring out their own versions of a good chorus and a good overdrive for me and they've been great. Um, we've also been using these uh, Eventide H9 pedals. Uh, these things, I don't even know. We have only skimmed the surface on these things so far. They can pretty much do everything, uh, everything that all of our other pedals can do. Uh, you use these different memory cards and situations. We just got them and we're still exploring them. So those are pretty much like our, our kill switches. We go to those when you know, we, these are failing us and it's been amazing so far. Tim and I both are not uh, JCM 900 haters. There's some JCM 900 haters out there and both of us kind of love them. Um, they've, we've used them on pretty much every record. Uh, mm -hmm. There's one magic one in our studio, the, the studio we use, the Blasting Room in Fort Collins, Colorado, and uh, they're amazing. Uh, people tend to, tend to not back them so much, but I don't know. I've always loved them. I've never hated them. And all that goes through the radial XF44 uh, switching systems and our Sure UR4D wirelesses. So that's kind of it. So they look, it looks a lot more, a lot crazier than it is, but really it's just a fancy way of plugging a guitar into an amp and some, some old effects pedals. Lately I've been using these uh, Dunlop uh, prime tone picks. And they're these new things that they sort of simulate tortoise shell, which tortoise shell is kind of a fucked. Uh, <laughs> and they've sort of nailed it. You know, there's a tone and a certain attack that you get from tortoise shell, and Dunlop have sort of done it with these. I use these big, crazy, rounded triangle picks because, long story, but I somehow acquired one of Kerry King's picks, and I'm a huge Slayer fan, so I started using a sound check. I was like, this is awesome! And so maybe it's just in my head, but I love the shape. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really cool uh, fake tortoise shell pick. And, uh, I've been using those on this tour and it's been awesome. I can't believe I'm talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> but I am. So I'm going to talk to you about my pedals a little bit. The pedals we keep off the floor um, just to because we get a little bit crazy out there and so we'd really do a lot of damage if they were anywhere near us. Um, and the pedals essentially just kind of simulate some of the stuff that we came across during the recordings of the songs. So like when we're writing the songs, we really don't mess with pedals. We don't mess with like effects. We just kind of plug guitars into amps and that's how we write everything and put the songs together. It's only in the studio that we find, you know, all the different gadgets and toys to add uh, different parts to the song. And then there are times where we hear things that we're like, well, that, that added something to the song. So let's bring that out live. Um, and there are sometimes there are things <laughs> Sometimes there are things that, uh, that we don't feel like we need to add to the song. And that's essentially what, what these are. They're just kind of bits and pieces of, um, I'd say a lot of the most recent record probably, yeah. like the Black Market, where we added um, a couple different effects to the clean tones, um, a couple different effects to a couple of the overdrive stuff. Um, I do a lot more clean tone stuff than Zach does. And so that tone has to like be just right, you know? Um, which, you know, we'll spend days in the studio getting the right clean tone. And so we try to simulate it with, um, with some of these, but it's all, it's all fairly simple stuff. It's like delay and reverb and tremolo. You know, it's all just kind of not, not rocket science really. And it's added pretty tastefully into the set. We kind of trust Jeff. He's like our artist back here to kind of paint the, uh, the different colors on into the songs. Um, and uh, he does a great job at it, so. The artist formerly known as Sketchy Robot. <laughs> I'd be remiss to not mention we're not using our own heads over here. We're using rentals because we're in Europe, of course. Well, we're in England right now, but mm. we um, at home. I had a hot rodded JMP, an old '70s uh, JMP Marshall head, redone by a guy named uh, Johnny uh, Meyer. He uh, he's a great guitar tech over there. He works for Brennan Smalls from uh, Metalocalypse and a bunch of other people, but. He hot rodded and redid it, and uh, that's what I've been using for the last two or three years now.